Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. Now, you might be wondering why I'm on the dynamic screen. Now, there is one reason, which I've only just noticed, which is pretty damn cool, but that is not the reason we're on this screen. The main reason is that some stuff has happened over the past few games that I don't actually want to spoil uh, straight from the opening screen. And just could you let me know in the future, actually, if you want me to start off on a screen that doesn't reveal all the fixtures, uh, that way you get them as we go through them instead. If you, let, if you want to see that, do let me know about that in the comments, because I think it might make things a little bit more tense in episodes. But that's not the reason for today. Also, Steven Gardner is now a highly influential player uh, as our vice captain. I think Safey has now moved into the influential players list too so as they're growing and Gardner's one well, of the older players we have at the club believe it or not um they are starting to creep up onto that so hopefully we'll get ourselves some team leaders soon because that'd be very helpful in terms of um convincing players to stay uh if you can get a team leader to talk to them at the moment we've really struggled with that i've always tried but it's never really worked because we don't have any team leaders against Suniuska, who are currently top of our group we were pretty piss poor as things go, we, we were pretty bad. Bravo got us a goal um, to actually equalise for us. But then Christian Jakobsen and Matthew Bastian sort of just put them in front. Um, I tried again the counter thing in this one. It just wasn't happening for us. But I think I have now stumbled, well, I say stumbled, had help from you guys mostly, uh, about a solution that does seem to have picked things up again, you could say. I did try to offer Brendan a new deal, but he wanted like £700 a week, and I'm not paying that for a player that isn't going to pay for us. So, like someone suggested, we can just let his contract run out, and he can just stay on at the club as a non-contract player. So, that might happen, hopefully. Um, but then again, if he wants that money and wouldn't let me offer him an amateur deal, he might well just leave anyway. But we'll have to see. I also played Traore as a ball-winning midfielder in this game to try and give us a bit more bite. It, it just didn't happen, and I think I've dropped him after this game. Um, I, I just, unlike some people say, I don't think he really just fits the way we play, and we seem to play better without him in the team despite his quality as a player. He just doesn't fit the way we play, and hopefully we can move him on the summer and get the wages off the bill. In slightly better news, along with this result, is the fact that Jonas Svenningsen scored on his debut for the Denmark Under-21s. He is still only 16 years old and has now got one in one for the Under-21s. Here's a little bet for you. What age do you think Svenningsen will be when he gets his first ever call-up and goal for the Danish national team? I genuinely reckon he'll be 19 when he gets it. That, that's my prediction. Let me know in the comments as well. So in this game, it took us a little while to get going, but I think on the balance of things, we were the better side. They had a lot of long shots in this one. Gardner gave us an early lead. I put Zahidi in this one instead of Svenningsen, who's really been off the boil lately and frankly he paid me back he assisted Gardner's goal scored one himself I think he was man of the match for us yes he was uh one goal but a nine in the game which is pretty damn good for him but I think what really made the difference and someone suggested this and I I agree was we switched midway uh, ironically we were already 2-0 up in this game but we were kind of just a bit lucky at that point we actually started playing a lot better after I switched the team to play wider um, from a defensive and an attacking standpoint, meaning that when those teams were getting the balls out wide, because we can see a lot of goals from crosses, that's generally how we get caught out. Our fullbacks or wingers, if you like, were much, much closer to their wingers in order to actually make tackles and block the crosses. And it seemed to make a difference to the cross completion of other teams. They only completed 3% of their crosses in this game, Vela, and it really did show. And I think that's really helped us. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. But also, us beating Vela in this game meant that we got ourselves an a Danish Cup semi-final against FC Copenhagen. We were at home against Silkeborg, and the, praise be, because in this game, they played the tactic. They didn't play the Marion Lee style of tactic. They played the tactic that we can't seem to play against. Well, in this one, we could. Zahidi, again, I gave him a start here because I felt that Svenningsen just wasn't justifying his position in the team at the time. Um, he did come off the bench and score, to be fair to the lad. But they did equalise, but we controlled this game from start to finish. And again, they only completed 6% of their crosses. And I think that having us play wider means that not only are the players performing better when they've got the ball at their feet and creating those wide spaces and the strikers are running into space but it means that defensively we look much much stronger still conceded a goal but that's just how we do it Zahidi's goal Nicholas Rowland with a header and then Jonas Fenningsen off the bench to make it 3-1 and that kind of put us a bit of a, a bit of a gap and I think the win in the last game certainly boosted morale also worth noting because I base a lot of what we do around about how it affects our youth teams as well uh, because I find that when we play certain tactics our youth team really do improve so for example for a while while we were playing that counter-attacking style last year our youth team were flying but this year they kind of stagnated then when we went to the attacking style they actually played worse so it was interesting but what i did notice is once we switched to the playing wider our youth team in their very next game put 10 they won 10 2 i can't think who it was against but it certainly showed me something they weren't a great side but come on 10 goals it's something's doing right when you scored 10 goals anyway against kurgia this game could have been a little bit different um they played quite well and 
that we're actually playing them in our first game today. So hopefully we did. But we did win away from home, 3-1. They, they complete 14% of their crosses, which is a bit higher. But still, I think we were the better side, created a lot of good chances. Vladimir Lubicic got a goal. Two goals for Mariano Bravo. One of them was a penalty, of course. They missed a penalty, um, which could have maybe changed the game quite dramatically. Fabian Moskutz to put in an absolutely imperious performance, though. But that was back-to-back -back wins in the league, which really just put us in a safe spot. And I need to talk about the league, because someone has explained to me exactly how it works, and it's actually more complicated than I even I thought it was. And finally, we had the Danish Cup semi-final against FC Copenhagen. And honestly, Honestly, I could not believe when this happened. We were fairly solid defensively. They've had a couple of clear-cut chances. We had some half chances ourselves. We weren't that bad catching them on the break. They did complete a few more crosses, but they are FC Copenhagen. But they just could not break us down. I thought we were going to struggle. Uh, once we got to extra time, they had a couple more chances. because I don't think they even had a clear-cut opportunity in normal time. But once the legs started to go, but we held on. There was one amazing save from Castaneda, which kept us in in like the 118th minute. And then when it went to penalties, I figured, you know what? We've got some good penalty takers. Bravo particularly, of course, scored. Um... But our goalkeeper was unbelievable. Castaneda, for me, was man of the match. Rogers Jr. played well, but Castaneda was man of the match. And Fabian Moskutza scored the penalty, which sent us, B67 of Greenland, into the Danish Cup final, where we will play against Kurga. And that brings us on to our next topic, which we very much need to talk about. But for now, it's important to quickly show you the league. So here's how we stand at the moment. We're second in our group with 39 points. Now, the way this works, and bear with me for a second, and you'll understand why we're a bit further into the video in a minute. Basically. Second in our group plays top in their group. So if things stayed at the moment, we would play Esbia if we in a two-legged tie. If we were then win that tie, we would then play against the winner of the other tie uh, in these groups, yeah? In another two-legged tie. If we were to somehow win that, we would then play off in a one-off game away at the team who is in the final Europa League spot in the championship group, which is usually third or fourth, depending on the cup winner. Now, the problem we have is that the cup final actually falls in between today's game and our final game of the season against Silkeborg. <laughs> so, here is what is going to happen for this weekend's set of videos, because there's probably going to be a few more based on what's going to be happening with this. Today's video will feature one live com, which will be against Kurga in the home game. I might rest some players because we've got to play them in like four days uh, in the cup final. and I don't want to give them any ideas. This video is out on Thursday. Then on Saturday, we'll have a separate video, which will just be the Danish cup final against Kurga, because I don't want to make it two in one video because I want to concentrate on the cup final. So I don't have to cut so much stuff out, plus to leave room for us to go to extra time and penalties, which, you know, given how we got through to this stage is very light. Likely. Then, the Silkeball game, which is the final game of the season, which will probably be meaningless as far as where we finish, uh, will probably be played off camera. And then, you'll have another episode on Sunday, the normal episode, will be a two-legged tie um, against whoever we play against. And if we get knocked out, then Monday is the analysis video, and then Tuesday back to normal. Basically, it's getting a bit convoluted at that point, but if we do go through, there'll be a Monday video as well, which will be another two-legged tie. Now, if we were to win the cup and win ourselves a place to play in the playoff against the team from the other one, the match just doesn't happen because apparently it's just our spot by default at that point. So it's all very complicated, but that's basically what's going to happen with it. Now, originally, I had planned to live comment any cup farms, but this was the worst possible time for this to fall. I figured this was going to happen many years down the line because... The only time I'd be able to live stream the final like I had originally intended to would be on Saturday night. But that means I wouldn't have any time to do the other videos for that weekend because I would normally do those on the Friday. And I can't do them on the Sunday because I have to go pick M up from the airport and it's like a two hour drive. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but that's just how it's going to have to be for this season. It's a shame because I was kind of looking forward to doing that. However, I am sorting out some streaming stuff and I hope to be able to start streaming on Twitch regularly soon uh, with a brand new save, probably Outcast to Icons 2. So I'm looking forward to that as well. And that way we keep this YouTube and that over on Twitch. That's the plan anyway. Right then, sorry for all the rambling in today's episode. I know it can get a bit grating, but we had quite a lot of stuff to discuss today and I've, I ended up having a big document. I was trying to work out all the permutations as to when I could put these videos because I didn't want you guys to miss any stuff because this is my first season of doing this. I'm sure next year will be a bit more streamlined. Uh, but yeah, I didn't want to just make it so that you were only getting like little tiny things every two or three days. So I figured if we're going to be doing stuff that doesn't require me playing loads of games off camera, I could just stack them up and have them every day uh, for a few days. So you could get videos Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, which would be kind of cool. But also, with that in mind, the reason I was able to take a bit more time over this is because we've only got one live comp in today's video, so I'm not going to have to worry about squeezing stuff in. Now, I am going to rest players for today's game against Kurga because we're playing them in the cup final in a few days, and I do not want to have injured players for that game. I think getting winning the cup would be such a dream come true for this first season, and I want to make sure that we're fully prepared for that. Kowalczyk's done okay since he's come, and he's certainly been better than Torre, that's for sure. 
So, starting lineup is going to be uh, Dosanya, who I'll show you in a minute. He's a new striker that's coming. He's Iranian, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Ivan Peric and Svenningsen, who didn't start the last game, so we'll give him a run out here. Coutinho and Magari Watson in the middle. Carl Rogers Jr. and Muscuta will have to play because we have no other options there. Roland, Ikonen, and Ruddy at the back with Castaneda in there as well. You notice we are playing much wider now. That's the real change. And on the bench, Garcia, Lubacic, Santos, Bravo, Augustin, Traore, and Zahidi. It's quite a stacked bench, so we should be okay. I feel like we might have enough. And even if we were to lose this game, I don't think it would make a great, great amount of difference in the grand scheme of things. Since we have a couple of moments, I thought I might as well show you Jonathan Dosanya. He's come in, he's 15 dribbling, 15 finishing, 15 first touch. I like those stats on this guy. Decent enough composure, his concentration is a little low, but decision, determination, flair, leadership, work rate, his passing isn't awful. Um, he's not super quick, but he's got good jumping reach. His heading isn't amazing. Uh, decent enough stamina. Pace. Nothing's, um, nothing's fantastic, but nothing's bad either, really. And he's fairly professional. So I thought, you know what? Let's get this lad in because we've lost a few players in the strike force over the, the Christmas period. So it'd be nice to get some reinforcements into these areas. I really do apologize if this episode has been a bit disjointed. It's just been hard to get all these thoughts out in one sort of cohesive thing. And I'm sure I've tried to edit it together as best I can, but I'm just kind of doing my best with it because it's a very new experience having to plan all these games out and stuff. So question of the day. And today's question is this. What made you decide to start a YouTube channel for Football Manager? Um, I think I might have talked about this before many years ago, but the main reason was at the lap at the time I only had a laptop that could play one game and that game was FM and I kind of been watching a lot of YouTubers at the time and I wanted to make my own channel, but I had no real oh Ooh. I had no idea what to do. So I thought, you know what? Let's just do Football Manager for a little bit. I liked football, so I figured I could bring it. But I was never really great at the game uh, to be perfectly honest and I didn't have much experience playing it, but I just kind of did it and the videos were pretty shocking to start with, to be perfectly honest. And I don't think they've improved greatly since then. Um, so what I would say, though, is if you are thinking about starting a channel, just take the plunge. Now's as good a time as any because we're in a bit of a lull between the games at the moment, I, I think, or it certainly feels like it to me. Um, so now you can kind of do it with as little pressure as you like, really. We've started off this game quite strongly. But yeah, if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. And I do advise you, or rather encourage you to start a channel if you're even on the fence about it. Just take the plunge. It's fun. It really, really is. Occasionally it won't be fun, but most of the time it is fun. Tengstead. Choco out on the wing here. Bonda. We've beaten them once uh, in recent memory, in fact. Obviously, today's team is a lot weaker than the team was in that game. Uh, so we can't possibly be expecting the same output from them. But some of these players might want to play themselves into the cup final squad. You never know. Ikenum with the corner. He's been quite decent from corners, I've got to say. Moskutsa. Ball in. Svenningsen's header and Hedegaard with the save. That's two good chances for us so far. We're looking all right here. But you see what I mean at how the uh, wingbacks are much better positioned to block those crosses. Now, right, we need that runner at the back post. And he doesn't seem to have made the run for much. Perich! Saved again by Hedegor. We should be winning this match. A win here would also guarantee us second spot. We've basically got it wrapped up, but the win would give it that extra icing on the cake. Yeah, they've completed none of their crosses so far in this match, which says a lot about the way we're playing. To be oh god. Well, um, there you go. That's what happens when you don't take your chances. Jonas Wind blazing through. I I, I can't. I keep. Every time I think of his name, I keep trying to think of wind puns, and I have none of them. My mind goes blank every single time. It's a good ball through from Nick, uh, Nick Lyerson. Very disappointing, really, there. We should be doing better with that. Enough players in the box to make that clear. That's disappointing. Although it does appear that he's picked up a slight knock. Um, so that's certainly something. Right, he is getting into this game dramatically. But he does appear to have picked up an injury, I think. So he might not last that long in this game, which is good because he's dangerous. Ikonen up to the number 11 who stood perfectly still. They don't seem to chase the ball much, do they? Right, Perich, go on, son. Down the... Oh. Since their goal, they've improved quite a lot, actually, um, which is a bit of a pain. Right, Ivan Perich, go on, son. Over the bar and Hedegaard with the save. We've created a good number of chances today and limited their crossing ability, which is what I really wanted to do, um, but just been a bit unfortunate elsewhere. I think we've still got a goal in this in this game, though. Yeah, there we go. Good tackle from Moskutsa again. That's much more like it. That's what I want to see from that area of the pitch. Svenningsen, look long, buddy. There we go. Dosanya. Surely not on his... Oh, he's taking it a bit wide. Perich is just offside, I think. Yeah, it's definitely offside. Ah, oh, Ivan, mate. Hold your run. Um, that's a disappointing scoreline in the first half. We played well, created some chances, but with a slightly lower quality of player in the team, that's certainly having an effect on us, I have to say. We'll only need... A, even if we lose this one, we'd only need a point in the final game against Silkeball to secure the second spot. Um... I was kind of hoping we'd at least draw today. So hopefully we can pull this one back. Amazingly, Wind is still on the pitch. Uh, we're also going to mark up their left side in midfielder because that seems to be where their attacks are mostly going through. But Wind is down to like 50% stamina. Um, I can't see him staying on that much longer in this second half. Rogers Jr. also not doing great on stamina, I wouldn't say. Rogers Jr. Just drop it in for Dosanya. 
He's lost the ball, but we should be all right if they can launch it, which they might have no choice but to. Hedegaard, looking long. Just knock this out of the air. Not amazing. Um, there we go. Right, breakaway time. Svenningsen, McGarry Watson, over the top. Ivan Peric is somehow going to get to this, you know. He might have a chance. Oh, flashes it wide of the post. Another chance. Tough one, that one, though. Honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed we've not scored today so far. Uh, I think we've played well in places. Coutinho, Svenningsen, Dosanya strikes, and it's saved again. I think Svenningsen or someone like... I think I think we're going to have to get Peric off soon because he's not having a good game and he's missed a lot of chances for us, unfortunately. Right, we're going to get Zahidi on in there and Peric, despite Dosanya being lacking fitness, we're going to get Bravo one in the middle because we need to replace him, unfortunately. Uh, Roland hasn't had a good game. Neither has Julian Ruddy, to be fair. Uh, but we'll get Ljubicic in because that's his position. Making three subs now. I just want to see if we can just snatch a draw so we don't have to worry about that final game of the season. Um, because we've been decent today, for the most part, just for that one little mo- Oh, here we go, Dosanya, bravo, not a good first touch from him, Zahidi, Coutinho, and it's over the bar, oh my goodness, the chances just keep coming, don't they? It's one of these weird games where I think tactically we've done most things right, we've created good opportunities, we've limited them to very few- Oh, that was a good chance for them, I've got to say, their crossing's been poor, which is what we've been trying to encourage, but for some reason- we just can't seem to quite make the breakthrough. And I do think it's possibly down to the quality of player we have on the pitch. Right, last sort of 10 minutes, we've really got no choice but to overload this one and try to sneak ourselves an equaliser, which would just wrap up that second spot. I kind of figured we'd get something from this game, to be fair. McGarry Watson, Ikonen. Oh, goodness me. Whew. I think as we're expanding ourselves towards the end of this game, we are going to allow a few more opportunities for them, which is not ideal, but you kind of have no choice in the matter. Sorensen. I might even push the old... Uh, guy into midfield approach that we we like to do. Sorensen. Coutinho, right? Rogers Jr. Bravo. Chance away now. Zahidi with the pace. He's into the channel. Someone Zahidi. Oh, my goodness. Not a, not a good effort. Ikonen actually can play as a ball-winning midfielder, so we'll let him. Sorensen. Tengstedt. There we go. Good stuff, guys. No worry. Oh, for goodness sake, Nicky. <laughs> Coutinho, right? Rogers Jr. Gotta look long. Oh, so bad. Nicholson, they actually seem to have improved towards the end of this game, which is not really the aspect of the game that I was looking forward to. I, I kind of figured we would be the ones that would improve, but there you go. Castaneda looking long. Nobody really there. Again, Tengstead. Muscuza, right. No. <laughs> right, Muscuza, look over the top, buddy. Zahidi, that's more like it, lads. Right, over the top. Oh, it's not a good ball. Not a good ball. Win that, win that, win that. There we sort of go. Oh, we're just not quite connecting with our passes at the moment. Mulvergord. Pedersen. Oh, dear. <sighs> it's a shame. I think 2-0 is harsh, but then I've said that so much lately, and I feel like that's still true. We're creating opportunities, we're just not taking them, and we've been beaten, unfortunately. It's just... It's weird. I mean, we have played a very, very rotated squad today, but we created enough chances to have goals. Perich should have scored goals earlier in this game, and we've been caught out later on while pushing for the pushing for the equaliser. It's disappointing, I have to say, but if we win the cup, it will not matter one iota uh, if we lost to this lot in the league, to be perfectly honest. I'd much rather win the cup than I would this particular game. It's going to be tough, but what they've offered in this game isn't all that much, and I feel like with a stronger squad, which we will have for the cup match, there's every chance of us getting something from that game. Moskutsa. Ball in. Dosanya, and it's over the bar again. This game has been dead even on the actual um, shots and whatnot. We've probably had better chances than them as well. But they're going to win the game 2-0. And that's really, really disappointing uh, to me. We are going to have to go and get a point against that in the Silk Ball game. Which I think we're strong enough to do with... Well, we, we, we'll still be lacking some players. We've got to be careful, but then Kerga will also be tired going into their final fixture. So I do think we'll be fine to get that second spot in the group. Um, I still feel that's a bit harsh on us, but hey, you've got to take the good with the bad. So here is how the league is looking. Our goal difference is much better than Kyrgyz. Uh We know we can't get second now, but we're playing Silkeborg on the final day of the season. They have to play against Suniuska, who are a better side than them, uh, just massively. So I think it's very, very unlikely that we'll fall out of second spot. Let's just see where the fixtures are home or away. Um, that would be quite an important one, really. Midland, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we're away at Silkeborg, and they're away at Suniuska. We need to get a point against the bottom club away, and they need to basically go and win against the top club in our group. Bravo, also top scorer in the league at the moment still. One more would see him take that, which would be pretty damn cool. But... Yeah, I think second place in this group and us playing in uh, likely, well, very likely to be against Esbjör in the final, um, well, you know what I mean, in the playoff thing, which is going to be interesting, that's for sure. But frankly, none of that will really matter if we can win against Kyrgyz and get into uh, 
the Europa League via the Cup because then it won't matter what we do in the playoffs unless the if a team if we win the Cup and then a different team other than us was to win the Europa League playoff would that mean that they'd play against us for that spot or would they play against the third place team um a confusing one for sure let me know in the comments on that one Sorry it's been a bit anticlimactic, and I'm sorry it's been a bit disjointed, but I hope you still enjoyed the episode. Um, not really great, but don't worry, on Saturday and all weekend, you're going to be getting loads of videos from this save, so I would not worry about that. If you have enjoyed it, oh, drop a like on the video. Just do it anyway, and I'll see you guys in the next episode for the Danish Cup final. We can at least get hyped for that. I'll see you guys soon, very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.